and yet he didn't have a clue, did he? What was the thing that turned him around? Someone came along with a better, do better argument, a better doctrine. No, he met Jesus. If you met Jesus, you, know, you don't have to hear a voice or get knocked off your horse, see a bright light, but you need to meet him. He needs to become so real to your heart that you understand, hey, it's about a person. Yes. I either surrender my life to that person and put my destiny in their hands or I go on in my own way. Those are the only two options. That's it. You know, John said, this is the, t this is the testimony. Let's see, let's go to uh, 1 John chapter 5, I believe. Verse 11. 1 John 5.11, and this is the testimony. God has given us eternal life. Okay, so where is it? And this life is in his son. You know, we talk about the finished work of Christ, the all-sufficiency of Christ. Paul said in, in the beginning of Ephesians that God has given us all spiritual blessings in Christ. And, so, and he's done it from the foundation of the world. You know, if you and I had a, well, we do. I mean, certainly needs in this world. We were poor. We didn't have the means of, of taking care of the situations that we had. But then we discovered that someone had deposited in a bank account all that we could ever need. Now, that's a very poor illustration of the fact that someone has already made a provision for every need. And we need to be willing to go to that and draw from that everything that we could ever possibly need with respect to our relationship to God and eternity. It's been put in a, it's been put in a person. He who has the Son has life. Well, it gets real simple, doesn't it? A child can understand this. He who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. It doesn't say he who jo joins a certain church. He who believes the Reformed Creed or any other one you care to name. You know, I've, I've, certain, I've encountered people like that. And man, the, the aim of their life is to get you to believe their particular creed, their particular version of Christianity. My God, if you could just get your doctrines right, you'd have what, what you needed. And I, I'm persuaded that many people like that don't have a clue. They don't know Jesus at all. All they're peddling is their particular brand of religion. We need the living presence of Christ in our hearts and lives. The more he possesses us, the more he is free to live and, and act among us, the more people will be drawn not to us. We're nothing. He is everything. He is a Savior who can take you all the way and will never leave you nor forsake you. So I guess it comes down to this. What John says, he who has the Son has life. He who does not have the Son of God does not have life. Do you have life today? Do you have him? And if you do, what is, what is your relationship to him? Is it just learning more about the Bible or is it, you know, practicing the religion or is it just trying to, trying to stay within the boundaries and trying to do your own thing. What was Paul's aim? You know, when he said, I started in Philippians chapter th uh, 3, he talks about his pedigree, but what, he, what happened when he met Jesus? He gathered all that pedigree up and threw it in the trash. Yeah. There's time for a house cleaning, and none of this that I had thought was so important is worth a plug nickel. Get, out, get rid of it. I, have, I got Jesus in place of all the stuff that was so great to me. I got Jesus. It's like the man who found a pearl of great price. What did he do? Huh? How much did he sell? Everything. Is it worth that to you, to know Jesus? Everything. But then what was Paul's aim in life? He says that I may study the scriptures and get my theology straighter than it's ever been. That I may be the, you know, that I may know him. It comes down to the knowledge of a person, the, the spending time with him, knowing who he is and what he's about. I tell you, you learn things that way you'll never learn just by studying the words of the book. Now, that doesn't mean we don't look in the book. 
But you look at the book with different eyes when you see past the words to the author of the words, and they become a living communication from a real person to your heart. That's what I need. That's what we all need to learn to know him. That's where growth comes from. That's where everything comes from. It's a living, vital, life-sharing relationship with the Son of God. That's, the, that's what he's called us to. And then he's called us to that corporately as well. He lives in a body of people who love each other and who share his life together. Oh, may God lead us to a greater appreciation of the one that we serve. He's not a way shower. He's the way. He's not a truth teller. He's the truth. He embodies what is true and what is right. He's not just a life giver. He is the life itself. And it's so different. We just want to bring everything down where we can control it. This is out of our control. We just surrender. We say, Lord, I put my hope and trust in you. Yeah. Where's your trust today? I put mine in him. I confess him. He is my only hope. But he is a sure and a certain hope because he has the authority of, the, of heaven itself behind everything that he has done. That is the Father's answer to every issue that befalls us. It's a living person. Praise God. If you, if you don't know him, seek him with all your heart. If he's knocking on the door of your heart, say yes. But let him create in you and in me a greater hunger to know him. Not just to sort of, you know, rock, rock along and say, well, I got it, I got it. I'm going to the right church. I believe the right stuff. No, that's not what it's about. It's about knowing him. And I'll tell you, he's gonna, it, it's, it's something that will never stop. We'll never stop plumbing the depths of who he is and what he's about. There will always be new surprises and delights in knowing him. He is an infinite, wonderful, all-sufficient Savior. To him be the glory. Praise God. This has been the Midnight Cry broadcast. If you would like a DVD or a CD of today's message in its entirety, please request it by program number. DVDs are $10 and CDs are $5. And for those who request it, we will send you our quarterly publication, The Midnight Cry Messenger, free and postage paid. Send your request to Midnight Cry Ministries, Post Office Box 685, Southern Pines, North Carolina, 28388. We invite you to join us again next week at the same time, and may God richly bless you until then.